All right, guys, this is slide four um, of our uh, 90s 2000 unit. New president, new mess. Um, we've talked about President Clinton and his terms, so let's fast forward uh, now to the 2000 election. Okay. The Republicans are uh, going to nominate Texas governor, George W. Bush. Uh, this is the son of former President George H.W. Bush. It's not Junior. Uh, they have different middle names. The father is George Herbert Walker Bush. The son is just George Walker Bush. So they're not Senior and Junior. Um, a lot of people think they are, but they're not. Okay? Um, so Texas Governor George W. Bush. The Democrats are going to nominate Vice President Al Gore. Um, this would be an extremely close election. Um, everybody went to bed on election night not knowing who the next president was going to be. Uh, and it kind of turns, uh, come to find out, sorry, got tongue tied there. As it turns out, or come to find out, whichever you want to say, uh, we wouldn't know for another five weeks who the president was going to be. Um, it came down to one state, Florida. Um, both men had enough electoral votes that if they won Florida, they would be the next president. So Florida was going to be the deciding state. Uh, and here you see the, the, the famous Newsweek cover. Uh, half of the, the president there is Gore, the other half is Bush. Uh, it's really well done, actually. Um, but this will come down to uh, a recount in Florida. Okay? Florida was very, very, very close. Um, Bush was declared the winner. The Democrats start screaming bloody murder. They go nuts. We got cheated. We demand a recount. Um, uh, long story short, uh, eventually this will make it... Uh, the Florida governor said, no, we're not doing a recount. Uh, Bush wins. Coincidentally, the Florida governor was Jeb Bush, George Bush's brother. Of course he's going to say, you know, we're not doing a recount. Um, the Democrats file a lawsuit. Uh, long story short, it makes its way all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court would rule five to four um, along pretty much party lines. Uh, conservative members voted no recount. Liberal members voted recount. Uh, so five to four, no recount. Um, Bush is declared the winner. Okay? Now, if you will remind me in class, um, I'll tell you exactly what the problem was with how the voting was carried out. Uh, I really got to kind of show you in class how it, how it works. But um, a month later, Literally, five weeks later, we finally find out that George Bush uh, will be the next president. Okay. Now, um, early on in Bush's presidency, uh, we he will deal with uh, the attacks of 9-11, September 11, 2001. Right? Um, he's not, uh, not been president in a year yet, um, and the terrorist attacks of 9-11 happened. Most of you all know a lot about these, um, but let's just kind of hit the highlights, if you want to call them that. Uh, September 11, 2001, um, two planes were hijacked um, and flown into the World Trade Center towers, uh, the Twin Towers, in New York City. Right? Um, over 2,500 people were killed. Um, on the planes, in the buildings, and on the ground as the buildings collapsed. Uh, over 2,500 dead in New York City. Um, a third plane was hijacked and flown into the Pentagon um, in Washington, D.C., uh, killing another 189 people. Um, a fourth plane... Um, we presume, according to its flight plan, uh, was going to be flown into another Washington, D.C. target, um, presumably either the 
the White House or the U.S. Capitol building, one of the two, um, but it would be crashed into a field in Pennsylvania as passengers on board uh, found out was what was going on um, and they tried to retake the plane from the hijackers uh, and are able to crash land it, well, just crash it, uh, into a field in Pennsylvania, uh, killing all 44 people aboard before it could be flown into another target and do lots more damage. Uh, so those 44 people um, are seen as heroes for giving their life um, to save potentially who knows how many more. Uh, the deadliest day in American uh, history in terms of terrorist attacks um, a couple sides ago, we talked about domestic terrorism. This is definitely uh, foreign terrorism. Now, all of this takes place uh, at the hands of what's known as the Taliban. Uh, the Taliban is a, uh, um, how do I say this, uh, uh, a religious government uh, of Afghanistan. Right? These are fundamentalist, radical, extremist Muslims who run Afghanistan. Right? Now, the militant uh, arm of the Taliban, okay? the, the, the Taliban is the official government. The militant arm of the Taliban, those responsible for carrying out violent acts and terrorism and so forth, is known as Al-Qaeda. Right. And the head of Al-Qaeda is a man known as Osama bin Laden. Right. Right. Now, let me take you back a little bit, just very briefly here, to uh, Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan. Right. The United States helps the Taliban freedom fighters drive out the Soviet Union. Their country is destroyed in this war that lasts over 10 years. And as soon as they are driven out, the United States abandons the country. We don't help them rebuild. We don't help them um, set up a democratic government. We don't help them rebuild their cities uh, anything. We just sort of say, congratulations, the communists are gone, you're on your own now. Um, the Taliban, the, the radical Islamic government, always sort of resented uh, the United States for abandoning them um, after the Soviets were driven out. Um, and this is kind of when they're going to get their revenge. Okay, Osama bin Laden uh, was blamed for the attacks. He is the leader of Al-Qaeda. Um, after 9-11, he hides out in uh, Afghanistan, in the mountains uh, of Afghanistan uh, and Pakistan, back and forth across the border, um, for almost 10 years. Okay? Uh, during that time, the Taliban was uh, removed from power in Afghanistan, but bin Laden was not found until May 1st, 2011, almost 10 years after the attacks. Um, uh, he was eventually discovered uh, hiding in a compound in Pakistan, uh, Abbottabad, uh, Pakistan. Okay. So there you see the uh, little funny meme, I hadn't seen champion. Yeah, if you can hide from the entire United States military for 10 years, uh, you're doing pretty well for yourself. Right? Uh, it was in this atmosphere of fear that the United States Congress passed what was called the USA Patriot Act. Okay? Um, now, the Patriot Act allowed for extensive telephone uh, surveillance, tapping of telephone lines, uh, email surveillance, electronic um, spying on social media sites and so forth. Um, uh, it allowed for detaining and deporting immigrants that were suspected of being involved in terrorism. Um, it allowed for indefinite holding of terrorists without a trial, which is 
supposedly illegal, um, all under the Patriot Act, um, meant to protect Americans. Uh, so again, it's this this attitude or this um, this feeling uh, of paranoia and hysteria and fear that uh, terrorism is going to kill us. Now, I'm not saying it wasn't justified. Uh, after 9/11, most any of anything was justified. So um, the Patriot Act, the USA Patriot Act, is created. Now, everybody thinks it's named Patriot Act because of patriotism. We're defending our country and all that. It's actually an acronym. I didn't know this till a few years ago. Um, it's actually an acronym. Um, it stands for Uniting and Strengthening America by Providing Appropriate Tools Required to Intercept and Obstruct Terrorism. Now, that's just impressive. I don't care whether you're, you're for or against the Patriot Act. Um, that's impressive. You can come up with a, an acronym that, that long, that many words long. Uh, you, you've done your, yourself well. So uniting and strengthening America by providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct terrorism. That's impressive. Now, again, a lot of people disagree with the Patriot Act. They see it as, you know, abusing uh, your civil rights, your, your rights as an American citizen, uh, right to privacy, um, and so forth. Uh, hence the little political cartoon here of the Patriot Act dog uh, pissing on the Constitution uh, of the United States of America. Um, again, I, I think it was needed at the time. Um, I don't know about now, but uh, once the government gets your hand, their hands into your rights, they're not going to turn loose. Okay? Now, during this time, Congress also created uh, a new cabinet department. The Department of Homeland Security was created. Um, it will take over immigration and naturalization. Uh, Homeland Security will be in charge of protecting uh, the country's borders uh, and finding any potential uh, terrorist threats or attacks uh, to the country. 